Hi, and welcome to The Balancing Act. I'm Montel Williams. And I'm Olga Villaverde. Today on The Balancing Act, Rare at Heart. What makes us tick? A special to commemorate Rare Disease Day 2021. That's right. Rare Disease Day is an observance held on the last day of February to shine a light on rare diseases and their impact on patients' lives. And over the last nine years, our series of Behind the Mysteries has covered over 100 rare diseases. With the goal to help empower patients to be their own advocate and ultimately obtain a diagnosis. Join us as we take you Behind the Mystery. And I didn't die. So my parents. So the way we wanted. classify lymphomas are. A couple years ago, I started to have symptoms. There are approximately 7,000 known rare diseases, but only 5% of them have approved treatments. Very, very shocked and, and just devastated. Today, we're talking to two TikTok influencers and a rare third double lung transplant recipient. Plus, we're going to speak with the National Organization of Rare Disorders, known as NORD. It's a celebration, and the Balancing Act starts right now. The zebra is the official U.S. symbol of rare diseases. Its distinct stripe symbolizes individual uniqueness and community solidarity. And as the official sponsor of Rare Disease Day, the National Organization of Rare Disorders, known as NORD, has embraced the symbol to express support for the approximately 300 million people worldwide living with rare diseases. We spoke with NORD's Lisa Sarfati to learn more. Take a look. NORD was founded in 1983 by a group of parents, patients, and patient organizations who were advocating for the Orphan Drug Act, a bill which was signed into law to help incentivize the development of drugs to treat rare diseases. For more than 40 years, NORD has brought together the rare disease community to bring about positive change. Through the Rare Disease Database on NORD's website, we provide disease-specific reports along with information and resources for the community. We also provide free webinars on rare disease issues that are open to the public and in-person events with the rare community, currently presented as virtual events. NORD also offers patient assistance programs that can provide financial support to eligible rare disease patients and caregivers. The greatest misconception is that rare diseases are obscure and don't affect many people. A disease is considered rare if it affects fewer than 200,000 people in the United States. Over 25 million Americans live with a rare disease. That's nearly one in 10. Chances are you know someone living with a rare disease. Currently, we've identified more than 7,000 rare diseases. Approximately 90% of rare diseases do not have any FDA-approved treatments. The need for more support for research into treatments and cures is critical to the lives of people affected by rare diseases. The goal of Rare Disease Day is to raise awareness for the challenges that rare disease patients and caregivers face and for the need for rare disease research and new treatments. At NORD, we invite you to participate in Rare Disease Day and help us to raise awareness. An easy way to take part is by participating in NORD's Show Your Stripes campaign, which can start by wearing stripes on Rare Disease Day, taking a photo and posting it on social media with a short message of support for the rare disease community and using the hashtag Show Your Stripes. There are virtual awareness and advocacy events happening leading up to and on Rare Disease Day in the US and around the world. These are safe, convenient ways to connect and discuss critical issues. Information on events in the U.S. can be found on the NORD website. Making a donation to research is another great way to show support for Rare Disease Day. There are a variety of ways to give on NORD's website, rarediseases.org. There are many things that give me hope for the future for rare diseases. The rare disease community is unlike any other that I've seen. Because these diseases affect so few people, we rely heavily on collaboration to advance progress. It is truly inspiring to see patients, caregivers, and patient organizations coming together to work on everything from policy to education to research, all for a common cause. That, coupled with the scientific advancements that are being made, is what makes the future for rare diseases so bright. When NORD was first founded, there were only 10 treatments approved for rare diseases. 
Fast forward to today, and we now have more than 800 FDA-approved treatments for rare diseases. While the need still remains great to close the gap for the 90% that do not have a treatment still, this is a tremendous amount of progress that has been made. NORD's mission is to improve the lives of rare disease patients and families. We hope that you will join us in the fight against rare diseases. That was so fantastic. Oh, it really was. Amazing. Special thank you to Lisa for her time. And for more information, visit rarediseases.org or rarediseaseday.us forward slash BTM. Now look, Travis Flores is a 29-year-old cystic fibrosis survivor and a recipient of a very rare third double lung transplant. Amazing. He uses his platform to share his story in the hope that it will help others. Take a look. Hi everyone, my name is Travis Flores. I am 29 years old and I am living with cystic fibrosis. Many of you might know cystic fibrosis as CF. It affects the lungs and digestive system. And when I was born, the average life expectancy of someone with CF was about five years old. And it was a progressive, aggressive terminal illness. And today, thanks to research and funding and the advocacy that you guys have done to provide that, people with CF are living very different lives than the life I've had to live. Cystic fibrosis, when I was growing up, was incredibly hard. I spent a lot of my time in the hospital, which led to needing a double lung transplant. Unfortunately, the first one failed. Um, I had a second one, which was an incredible gift um, in 2017, um, and that one failed. When that one failed, I thought it was the end of the road for me. However, with the advocacy I did and with the help and support of people like you who advocate for people like me, I was able to get a very rare third double lung transplant thanks to UCLA. I'm one of about 30 people in the world to ever have that done. So to be here today, alive, talking to you about cystic fibrosis, about rare disease, about research and funding and advocacy means the world to me. Um, becoming an organ donor is incredibly important as well. An organ donor can save up to eight lives and countless other people can be helped by the tissues of an organ donor. Um, my community suffers a lot. There's about 30,000 people in this country with cystic fibrosis and about 70,000 people worldwide. I know that's not the most rare disease, um, but it's not a common cold. Um, it takes a lot of effort every day for people like me in my community. And we go through the worst of the worst things you could possibly imagine. My voice is like this because of an intubation tube of being on a breathing machine. Um, I ask that you all consider advocating for people like me in the rare disease community. Help us get funding to fund the research, to help us get medications to keep us alive and safe. And also, you can keep us safe by wearing a mask. This is everyday life for me. I know no different. I've done this for 29 years. We can do this for just a little while to help each other, keep each other safe. Thank you guys, take care, be well. Welcome back. We partnered with WeGo Health, who works with over 100,000 patient advocates and influencers with a mission to transfer healthcare. Here's Olga with more. Hi, William. Thanks so much for being part of our fabulous Rare Disease Day special. Hi, thank you for having me. So I was looking at your bio, my goodness. Okay, so you're 23, a three-time leukemia survivor. You have a podcast, a clothing line called The Illist. You did a TEDx talk. You are a WeGo Health patient leader and a Leukemia and Lymphoma Society ambassador. My goodness, so much great stuff. What got you into it? Yeah, so pretty much right after I got diagnosed, um, I made a friend named Roni, and we were kind of both patients and leukemia patients at one point. And we were kind of going through the motions, talking, getting to know each other, and pretty much bantering. We found out the conversations we were having could help a lot of people. And so what we pretty much ended up doing was deciding, hey, why don't we have these conversations for everybody? And so what we did was we decided, let's press the record button, started recording them, and made the Illus podcast. And then the other ways that that kind of got 
into advocacy work was like my TEDx talk, for example. I had that opportunity through a connection at my old school where I ran with the executive committee the TEDx event prior years. And what they did, they called me back and they're like, hey, let's get started. Let's let's have you on the show. Let's have you a part of the conference and let's hear what you have to say. So yeah, it's a cool opportunity. And people are watching and listening. I understand you have more than 90,000 TikTok followers. What makes a great TikTok? The three things that probably make the best TikTok is one, using uh, the popular sounds, the trendy sounds at the time, two, not being afraid to do it in public, and three, probably making sure you involve people around you, not being afraid to ask your family, your nurses, uh, at least for me, nurses, <laughs> friends, whoever's around you, don't be afraid to get them involved too. I've done a TikTok once or twice with my kids, no more. Uh, William, let me ask you this. Um, what was life like pre-cancer and becoming an influencer? Is that what you wanted to do? Life pre-cancer was me in college kind of just working my tail off. I was a student athlete, um, really good in academics, 3.9 GPA, um, just really focused on my life and everything. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, I kind of started like vlogging and trying to be a YouTuber. So that influencer kind of mindset was already there. Uh, but nothing really ever came of that. And so then I went to DC, started an internship, kind of figured out I didn't want to be a real corporate guy either. I didn't really want to sit behind a desk, wasn't really excited about that. And then I got diagnosed. So this kind of domino effect of things that happened um, kind of gave me an opportunity to kind of sit back, reflect, think on who I am, what I want to do. I just decided, you know, maybe I can try this TikTok thing for fun. You know, I have a lot of time on my hands. You know, you're receiving cancer treatment. You don't have a lot of energy to do things. So my thoughts were kind of one path. And I just started making TikToks for fun and trying to help people out and with the idea of just making people feel less alone. And it kind of worked out. That's so great. It sounds like uh, after the leukemia, kind of like the dream started changing and the journey kind of took a, a detour, if you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cancer kind of uh, stripped me of my like identity and who I was and who I thought I was and what I wanted to be. But um, I figured that out that that's not who I am and that's not what I want to value. I want to value family, my friends, my relationships and like live a life that's fulfilled and promising, not something that's empty and just achievements. So yeah, dreams definitely shifted uh, through that period. And we have a huge special, you know, Rare Disease Day. We're very proud of it. Why is it important to you? Rare Disease Day, all these people with chronic illnesses, you know, one less person feeling alone is a big deal. You know, I know when I got diagnosed with leukemia, it was really hard for me to feel like I wasn't just the only person on the planet who had the disease, especially as a young adult. You know, there's a whole group of us adults out there who are trying to figure out life, you know, college, relationships, et cetera at this weird time. I was reading here, William, that you're trying to make cancer cool since 2018. What does that mean and have you succeeded? Have not succeeded yet, still working on that, but <laughs> the 2018 is from when I was diagnosed and trying to make cancer cool is simply to make it not something that's so taboo or something that people run away from. I lost a lot of friends and people that I thought I was close with during that time and uh, seeing them kind of all shift out of my life was really hard for me and I would just rather have it be something that people are more approachable to and can see themselves helping, you know, helping the patient to the cancer center, bringing them food and just even starting up a conversation with them. Um, it really helps out a lot. Well, you're an amazing young man. What does the future look like for William? Yeah, so this year just plan on going to school and finishing school. I have one year left. I'm a senior um, and then you know, starting my life, getting a job, and uh, hopefully settling down and finding something more fulfilling to do. I don't want cancer to be my entire identity. I do still want to help and advocate for patients and see how I can help other people in the future, especially post-COVID, hopefully. You are an amazing, the sky's the limit for you, William. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> and if you'd like more information on William, you can actually check him out on Instagram, TikTok, and his podcast. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Let's meet another TikTok influencer from Wego Health, Kelly Barrett. Well, I was diagnosed with FA when I was 18. I was just a little clumsy in high school. Then my progression got worse and my balance coordination was really off. Now I need to use a mobility aid. 
So a few years after that, I realized I had been going through a lot of trauma. I was grieving the new diagnosis and I realized it would have been very helpful for me to have someone like myself out there on social media spreading some helpful messages about being diagnosed with something so challenging. A great TikTok is probably being spontaneous and just having fun with it. It's really helpful for me when I show FA in a real honest way and just have fun with it. I don't take myself too seriously. Partnering with Farah has helped tremendously. It's helped me make friends in the FA community who are around my age dealing with similar challenges, like my friend Frankie, who was also on Behind the Mystery. And then it's also led to so many opportunities to advocate for FA. Like last year in 2020, I was able to go to D.C. for Rare Disease Week, and I talked to congressmen about rare diseases and the various issues going on in our community. So YouTube was a way for me to process everything going on, and then it led into me being able to share share my knowledge and what I've learned with people who may be going through similar challenges. It is so rare by definition, but there are so many rare diseases out there that when you put us together, we are strong and we are not alone. Check out Kelly on Instagram and TikTok and her website, MyDarlingLifeWithFA.com. Want more? Check out the Behind the Mystery podcast, downloadable wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Bouncing Act Celebration of Rare Disease Day 2021. It's been fantastic. Mm -hmm. And a special thank you to Nord and our patient leader partner, We Go Health, for being part of this amazing show. You know what? We'll see you next time.